there and welcome back to yet again uh, another review. Today we're going to be having a look at a classic Angela Mao vehicle that was released um, in a double pack from Eureka Entertainment along with Hapkido. Um, it's nice to be reviewing some Angela Mao's. I mean most people probably remember her most notably as Bruce Lee's um, sister in Enter the Dragon. It's uh, quite a shame actually I always think in Enter the Dragon that Bruce and Angela never actually shared screen time together. I know because like the whole sister story in Enter the Dragon was told uh, in flashback. Um, but yeah, we're going to be looking at Lady Whirlwind well today, made all the way back in 1972. So this was the same year as Fist of Fury, directed by Huang Feng, who also directed Shaolin Plot that I reviewed um, previously on my channels. Um, you, I mean, you have to remember with these kind of films, this is when the kung fu genre, as it became known, was pretty much in its infancy. Like, you know, it was pretty much starting off, um, still trying to figure out, obviously Bruce Lee had sort of exploded at this point in 71, 72, uh, with Big Boss, Fist of Fury. But it was still early territory, you know, it was still early days in the kung fu uh, industry. So these kind of films, although they somewhat seem lacking in some of the fight scenes or even some of the dialogue or some of the discrepancies on why a fight breaks out or anything like that, that you know you can't underestimate these um, classic kung fu movies um, it was really only, like I say only started to really get going this is where the kung fu genre was pretty much radical uh, in some of its decisions I mean if you look at say Come Drink With Me and Touch of Zen both done by King Hu and here with Angela Mao full of very strong confident female leads that can equal if not better like any man uh, male that is in the movies uh, with them like any of their male co-stars you know these are very strong female characters that we get here and Angela Mao um, is no exception <clears throat> Angela Mao's father Mao Young Kang I believe his name was was leading he was like a leading player in Chinese opera who taught her when she was growing up about like sort of acrobatics um, obviously helping her get roles especially leading roles and um, if you are a female in Chinese opera as usual like with Chinese opera all the female parts were usually played by um, men um, so like her father was he was quite familiar with um, Chinese opera and things like that but it was Huang Fang here the director who spotted her and recruited her for a role uh, in his movie um, I think it's the Angry River um, I believe that's what it's called um, I think actually as well the Angry River I think that it was correct me if I'm wrong was that like the first Golden Harvest movie um, or one of the first I think it may have been the first Golden Harvest movie uh, that was ever made. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I, I think that it was one of the first ones. What is interesting about this movie is that not only do we get a female hero, um, there is also a female lead villain as well, which is very uncommon um, in some of the kung fu move. A lot of the kung fu movies, you never really got um, sort of a the main villain being a female. She's the ma female villain in this. She does sort of uh, disappear. Um, she's only in it for like the first hour or so. Um, uh, but she is like a main antagonist um, in the movie. We also get Sammo Hung here sporting some very awesome sideburns um, as one of sort of the chief goons. Obviously Angela, Angela Mao, as I mentioned, most famous for appearing in Enter the Dragon. Um, this That role in Enter the Dragon, though, was a role that apparently Bruce Lee insisted um, that she had a part in Enter the Dragon. Uh, in, like I say, even though they don't actually appear on screen together. Some of these fights, and like I mentioned earlier, and this can seem sort of crude and not staged all that well. Um, but like I say, when you watch these kind of films, especially these early kung fu movies, you have to remember all the players, all the stuntmen, all the directors, all the choreographers, they were all still figuring it out, you know, how to shoot a scene, how to shoot an action scene. They were all sort of working out what is best, you know, for the medium that they're working in. Uh, like I say, the editing, you might be a bit off in places, but you have to remember to say this is like Kung Fu first generation, uh, as it were. This is when everyone involved, like I say, directors, producers, stuntmen, we're all learning their craft. And it takes nothing away from the movie. And it's films like this, why Angela Mao is like revered so much. Um, it's worth noting that the film was also released as Deep Throat. Um, sorry, not Deep Throat, Deep Thrust. Deep Thrust. I, I took a pun on Deep Throat, the movie, and they called it Deep Thrust, which does make you raise an eyebrow at uh, some of the decision choices with some of the marketing back in the day. Uh, obviously, like I said, to capitalise on the success of Deep Throat um, that was doing the rounds at the time. Um, and like I say, not exactly the best uh, title in the world. I think Lady Whirlwind is uh, a lot more suitable. So what I noticed about this film right away is that you see obviously a different Golden Harvest logo to the one we've come accustomed to over the years. So you see a very, you know, you know you get them... 
uh, in the classic Golden Harvest movies, the, the big, bold yellow bars that come up to form like a G and then it pans back. Here, the Golden Harvest logo is, is very different. Um, they obviously didn't stick with that one for that long. So the, basically the film opens with this lady seeing this group of guys fighting all against one man and starts running. And have, have you noticed in these movies as well that when they're in a fight and they sort of run from someone, or like this, somebody's running from a gang or something like that, it goes from location to location so quickly. Like that one minute they're in a forest, then they're in a town, then they're in the mountains. You know, they'll start running, they'll cut, and then they'll cut back, and then they'll be in the middle of somewhere completely different, which does happen sometimes. Um... It's amazing they're amount, like it's almost like they teleport to some of these places sometimes because they're nowhere near these places. But in the next shot, they're right there. Um, like I say, in a forest, then in a quarry, all within like half a second. Here we see Sam, as I mentioned, as one of the mobsters. Worth noting as well, they did like say this opening shot. It's all location based in like here in the style, which gives the film that sense of authenticity. Um, there's a lovely shot where you see the guy beaten, or say he's played by Chang Yi, who done a lot of work for Shaw Brothers. Uh, you see these sort of feet feet approaching before the credits roll, which I think is a nice little shot um, before like. Um, uh, you know, the credits kick in, you see him sort of beat and you, you see this character, this female character approach him. You can't see her face, uh, but you see her feet um, approach him, um, which I think works really well, given that sense of, you know, it's not over yet, he isn't dead. Um, and when I first saw that bit, I thought that was Angela Mel, uh, the, the feet you see, but uh, it's it's not. Um, it was, and as well, it's worth noting that, you know, what... The film starts with um, Meow going into like a gambling den casino. It's a bit like James Bond when you think about it, because I say you've had like a pre-credits sort of action scene. Then it starts with Angela Meow going into a casino. It's got all sort of some James Bond uh, themes going on there. Um, Priest Hulk sequence, casino. So Meow starts gambling and he's looking for someone. So she has gone right into the lion's den. Uh, so to speak, right away. We don't know nothing about Angela Mao's character at this point. Um, it's just, you assume, I'll say, obviously she's looking for somebody. Uh, she would just, what, you know, you, you're sort of unaware what she's there for, what her mission is, what her goal is. Um, and looking for Ling Shi Hua, I believe. And fight breaks out here where Samo gets kneed and elbowed. He gets kicked in the throat to boot. Uh, one guy gets an axe in the chest. Uh, even at one point, we see the Bruce Lee sort of leg grab from Emperor to the Dragon with sort of a backward somersault. Uh, even though this was sort of made years before, if you remember the sort of the leg grab that Bob Wall does in that infamous kick um, that... Um, it's in the Bruce Lee movie. Here they sort of do the same thing, but the guy, like if I recall, sort of somersaults backwards or something like that. But it's the same kind of move uh, that we see here. Um, I think Samo was the action choreographer on this movie. I believe he was because he was obviously very close working with Huang Feng. He started out sort of as his action choreographer and then Huang Feng was encouraging him to get more in front of the camera and have more roles in front of the cameras. And, you know, he was very much his protege um, with them two working together, as I mentioned in my uh, Shaolin plot review. Um, as I say, please notice, his, you know, it was Huang Feng student, like Samo was Huang Feng student, like when it came to filmmaking, and Samo owed um, you know a lot to Huang Feng. It was it was like Huang had basically taught him the ropes, so to speak. It was him that just gave him sort of the basics in filmmaking, and um, Samo's very much sort of his student uh, through films like this and uh, say Shaolin Plot. Um, so yeah, as I say, so after this happens. Mal kicks their ass basically inside the casino and then the, the fight continues outside. Samo once again gets absolutely beaten up here. So the villains, led by Tung Ku, dispatch some fighters to go to the inn to bring in Angela Mao. Uh, Madame Tao is also like one of the main villains. I've mentioned it's very unusual having a female uh, villain uh, in some of these movies. Spares Samo for not being able to handle her. So the goons mistake this other girl for her and she mentions that Leng Shi Hua is dead which, to which Angela Mao overhears, and she's shocked. She like, what? What do you mean he's dead? She, she's just speaking to these goons, uh, and, she, and Angela Mao overhears, and it's the madam, uh, the the female antagonist. It's basically her who wears the trousers in the villains' camps, even ordering Tung Ku not to go to brothels. But as the film goes on, it's actually Tung Ku who takes over, because uh, Madam Tao disappears. Like I mentioned earlier, she just sort of she's the one of the main villains, and then she just sort of disappears out of nowhere which can only i would imagine was either an injury 
um, because you you wouldn't have a villain there and then they just disappear. It could have either been an injury, she got hurt doing something on the set, or there was a bit of a fallout with the producers about something or contract or something like that. Um, because as I say, it's almost implied that she was going to be the villain, like the main villain, and then like I mentioned, she just sort of disappears. Um, so it could have been a fallout with the studio. Even at like one of them like long cigarette holders that she's got that villains always use. I mean, she you, it, you do wonder what would have happened if she had been uh, in it throughout most of the movie. Uh, it turns out, she, like uh, she she is still alive. Um, there's Shuang Shuang, her character, this character girl. Um, I think that's her name. Uh, Shuang Shuang has been nursing him back to health, explaining who, the, like the feet were at the beginning. It wasn't Angela Mao, it was actually this girl. Uh, turns out Angela Mao wants revenge on this guy who, like, who's sort of you were sort of um, rooting for, thinking he's a good guy, but Angela Mao actually wants revenge on him. And for quite an, what was quite interesting for like the with here, it's not like he done. He killed somebody, or he, in well, he did insult her. But the story is that um, uh, he abandoned her sister, which is interesting. Is this is all backstory in the past, and it's something we don't see as an audience. So almost like we are joining the story uh, with Lady Whirlwind, sort of halfway through. It's almost like something's happened, but we, as the audience, are coming into it after the fact. If that makes sense. Uh, even like that opening fight, it's right in the middle of something. So it's almost like Wang Fang is like this stuff happens, but as a, like an audience, we're only seeing that bit of the story, and then uh, the film obviously goes on. So, so that that's all backstory. Um, we get to learn that three years has passed since the start of the movie, and he's like, "Tell you what, let me get rid of these bad guys who have done like basically done me over, and then you can take your revenge, right? Um, you can fight me." So. Angela Mel agrees to spare him up to this point. She's like, right, okay, do what you got to do. Then I'm going to kick your ass, basically. Because uh, you abandoned my sister. That was wrong. I'm, you know, me, I've got a score to settle you. So she, she just wants, basically wants to beat him up. Uh, so he returns and takes on some of the gangsters. Some nice stunt work here. Guy flipping from height onto a table, using like wooden posts from the balcony, railings as weapons. I mean, like I say, with Samo doing the choreography, it's great that he's using... If you notice, well, you can probably assume it is Samo because there's lots of props being used in this fight. Um, even in, like I say, some a film as early as this, you can tell Samo is incorporating plot, like, plots, props that are around him and how to use the set and things they can use. And uh, yeah, really nice scene. Um... Swang lets lets her call her Miss Wang. Uh, she wants to help this guy. Help this guy. So they have a power she how and go to bury him. So they go to bury this guy, and then Miss Tao is like, "Look, I know I have no beef with you, but I do have a beef with him." Like Angela Mao is like, she finds him and they're burying him, sort of um, after they sort of beating him up. Um, and she's like, look, I don't have a beef with you, but I've got a beef with him. And you're like sort of going to kill him, but I need him to beg. So if anybody's going to kill him, it's going to be me. Um, funny how the film does have a few twists here and there. Like I said, at the start of the film, as I mentioned, you think it's Angela Mao's feet, but it isn't. Notice as well in these forest, like the forest fight sequences that happen in the, movie, in the movie, there's a great use of natural light. And it's almost picturesque in some of the shots that Huang Feng uses. Uh, a lot of location stuff here. Um, some of the movie is set based, obviously, but there's some nice shots uh, in the forest when they're or you're sort of in the woods, so to speak, when they're flying outdoors. And a lot of natural light that really comes through and it does make the film uh, sort of pop uh, in some ways. Uh, so the villains who get this Japanese guy to take them out, and um, Miss Chen is like, so like Angela Mao is just completely like, so what if you're Ninth Dan in karate? I don't care. She's like, she's not intimidated by these guys at all. It's like, they've got an expert from Japan. She's like, I don't care if you're ninth, Dan. You know, I really don't care. And I just love that line. Then she takes an arm with loads of gusto and chops him super hard to the neck. Angela left she held at the temple to rest, but he disappears and finds this old man. See, the film sort of... Then we go into even... We have all this going on. Then we have even a sub sort of student master plot as well going on. Because... Um, he disappears and he finds this old man who's been bitten by a snake crawling into the forest and she how carries him to help this old man and in return that old man helps him learn Tai Chi Palm. Uh, the great thing about Angela Mao is she always has this driven 
determined, almost scary look on her face. If you look at her sort of charisma in Enter the Dragon, especially in this film, she's got a very, very intense look on her face. She doesn't have it so much into sort of films like Hapkido. In Hapkido, she's a lot more friendly. But in this film in particular, she has almost, like I say, a overwhelmingly scary determined look on her face she had real charisma that really does come through on the camera um real treat uh, to see her so with some of her i say how serious she is and her, the tone of her face so the chai chi training is basically she how punching loads of rocks that's the training that uh, is involved here so the bad guys happen to just stumble upon him and kill the old man you aren't sure as an audience how much time has passed at this point so in retaliation she she how goes to take on tung ko and he's like i don't want to fight here which is just basically an excuse to give the film more scope and different surroundings which works to its advantage and as soon as we get there the fight is already gone like begun they go to sort of near this river um and it's like I said, they could have easily fought there, but he's like, nope, I don't want to fight here. And it's just an excuse to just get a bit more uh, location in the film. And it, the film doesn't suffer because of that. Um, happens by this river, like I said, the sand with great sun reflection off the water. He ends up blinding Tunko uh, with a finger jab. So the film ends with him getting revenge. And Miss Chen is like, as Masco is like, it's my turn now. Miss Wayne begs her to spare uh you know to spare which is just randomly all of a sudden as now says okay like all this time she's wanted revenge on that guy on that guy shuang shuang is like oh no please spare him let him go because she sort of saved him at the beginning of the film and angela mel just out of nowhere just goes yeah all right then she doesn't get her like payback at all so that the whole thing with her sister being abandoned she didn't get any justice for that at all uh, maybe she saw what he had been through and she didn't want to cause him any more pain i don't know but she has a complete change of heart at the end so like i say the whole film she's looking for vengeance for her sister and then right at the last minute when she says okay i'll spare him you know it just comes out now which is fine but you was expecting them to even even if they fought and then she suddenly changed her mind it had been different but they don't even do that um, she just suddenly says, well, all right, I'll leave him. And then she just walks off, and that's the end of the movie. Um, it's still a great Angela Mao vehicle, and it's great to see early Sammo Hung here as well. Like I mentioned, you have to remember, this was all happening when the genre was still still finding its footing. But if, you've never, if you haven't picked this up, this uh, double pack from Eureka Entertainment, please, please do pick it up because you'll say you've got lady whirlwind and hapkido here um there's a cut i wish they'd have put like a uh, when taekwondo strikes in it as well um there's a couple of other films i probably could have included uh with this but it might be rights or something like that but um yeah if you've never seen lady whirlwind check it out for some great kick-ass stuff from angela mao and some early uh sammo hung choreography so thank you very much indeed for watching hope you enjoyed the review and i'll see you soon